Welcome and good evening to you. How are you? This is Dr. Titch and I'm so excited to have this honor and privilege to share the word of God with you. But this is always a great honor to have access to your life, to your home, to wherever you are right now. And we get into the word of God together. So if you do have your Bible, pull it out. If you have somewhere to take notes, that'll be good too. So let's get into the word together. And I pray that God will minister to you and encourage you. I want to talk, continue talking. We're talking on the subject of the kingdom model of investment. I want to talk on a very important subject related with what we are talking about. In order to become a master investor, as you've learned from what we covered last week and what we're building on this week, you need to have a certain frame of mind, a certain way of thinking. And it's unfortunate that, uh, as you remember what Mr. Pinker Sevata said, uh, that um, when you're dealing with investors, when you're dealing with bankers, when you're dealing with people that are in that setting, the way they think, the way they talk is totally different from the way uh, all of us uh, do talk. And that's primarily because of their exposure, what they're used to, what they've been learning in their school and in their classes. And that causes them to have a frame of mind that's totally different from everybody else. So if you're going to deal with them, Jesus taught us, taught us a principle that we ought to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. We have to have a, a, a certain level of thinking that is able to, to deal with the people we're dealing with. So that brings me to today's subject, which is investments into you. You are an important part of your success. Isn't that so true? That your life, who you are, and uh, what's happening to you is so important. And we often neglect making those investments. Now, I do these sessions, and I sit with you day after day, Monday to Friday at 8 o'clock, 30 minutes of investing into you, simply because I believe in you. And I believe you value yourself enough to make time to sit with me or to sit with other people that are speaking principles like this. Proverbs says it is through wisdom that a man will separate himself and intermeddle with wisdom. And I want to talk about wisdom today and investing wisdom into your life. It's the wisdom you invest into you. It's the principles you invest into your life that begin to shape the way you think. Now, eight years ago, I was not what I am today. I, I did not have the language I have today. I did not have the way of thinking that I have today. Eight years ago, I would not have invested millions into a movie or even thought that I had the capacity to make investments of millions into movies, millions into Mitch the Millionaire, the game that we designed, millions into Fateland Publishers, the publishing house that is publishing our books and those of many other people. I didn't know that I would be running 17 businesses eight years ago. But when God began to work on me, I began to get into the Word and open my heart and my mind to a godly model of thinking. And it's been a process, and God is continually working on me. I, trust me, every single day, I'm working on this brain. I'm working on the way I think. I'm working on my mind, developing myself, investing in myself, studying, looking at different role models, mentors, different people in different sectors, meeting and having events and coaching sessions with people that coach me. So I'm constantly working on myself. The question is, what investments are you making into you? Have you invested into yourself? What are you doing to change your brain? You need your brain. You need your mind for your next level of financial success. Uh, you know, 95% of the people, like I was saying yesterday, are living in consumptive debt, and that's primarily because of the way we think, because of the way we are exposed to life and we are coached into life. We think in a certain way, and that's resulting in us living in debt. The only way out is to change our thinking. And that's what we are all on about here in these sessions on Couch Time with Dr. Titch. I'm investing knowledge into you. Like I said, Proverbs says, through desire, a man separated himself and intermeddled with wisdom. Meaning, it's easy to sit and watch television and watch other programs, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's easy to become a, a movie junkie, and it's just movie after movie, TikTok after TikTok and, and all kinds of stuff that is out there. Entertainment is the poor man's consolation that 
breaks his focus from the fact that he is poor. Entertainment is the poor man's consolation that breaks his focus from the poverty that he is living in. You need to break out of the cycle of entertainment. And I'm not saying stop the entertainment. I'm saying have a balance. Be balanced. Any, too much of anything is not good for you. Too much sleep. The Bible says if you sleep too much, you will be poor. If you eat too much honey and love too much oil, you will be poor. If you love hanging around with the wrong people, you will be poor. If you're slack and you say there's a lion outside, you will be poor. All of these things lead to poverty. So having a balanced life means you understand that entertainment has its place in your day and you have a time to wind down after a busy day, let down your hair, relax, take a breather, but then get back into growing yourself, investing in yourself, empowering yourself for the dream and the vision that you carry. Failure to do so will result in poverty. And trust me, that is why so many people are living on that level of marginal poverty that we're talking about. And yesterday we established that the Word of God says when you see somebody who is poor or who is destitute, you ought to make an investment into their life. And the investment is whatever they may need. And sometimes it's money, sometimes it's food, sometimes it's shelter temporarily, but sometimes or a lot of the times it is knowledge. So one of the key components in dealing with people that were living in poverty within Judaism or within uh, the, the Jewish context was to give them principles from the Torah, from the Word of God that empowered them to think differently. The primary responsibility of the believer was to teach the Word, to impart the Word to others. And that's why we're here. We are here to share the Word of God with one another. And I want to share with you just a number of, a couple of, a few scriptures that will help you understand and value what I have just presented to you. The first scripture that I'll read is Proverbs chapter 2, and we'll read verse 1 to verse 5. It says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, strong words. You need to treasure my commandments, receive my words, be attentive to my wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. Oh, that's beautiful. The words, the commandments, the wisdom, and uh, understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice and again understanding, and if you seek it like silver, and search for it like hidden treasure. That's a passionate position. I've ever seen, I've been to Durban and to Cape Town a couple of times. And, you know, when you've got one of those chalets or those um, beautiful uh, homes by the beach, when you're sleeping there and you've got that beautiful window that looks at the ocean, early in the morning, around 5 o'clock, as, as the sun is beginning to break the sky, you see these people walking around with, with metal detectors. I'm sure they're looking for gold or watches or whatever they're looking for. But you see them almost daily coming through and they've got this thing sweeping uh, the beach looking for treasure. They are diligent. They are up early. They are consistent. They are checking. And if that thing goes beep, 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 they stop. They get their shovel. They dig, dig, dig. And then, oh, it's just a piece of metal. Then they throw it away. Then they continue doing what they're doing. But I love their diligence. So he says you've got to be diligent, like somebody searching for silver and somebody looking for hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the find the knowledge of God. Now, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, insight, the pursuit of the word of God and of the commandments will result in you having a knowledge of God and a knowledge of the fear of God. Now, you may be saying, okay, what good is that to me? The Bible does tell us, and hopefully we'll get to the scriptures just now, that does tell us that the fear of the Lord will lead to riches and to wealth. So if you want to be wealthy, if you want to be prosperous, one of the key factors is getting yourself into a place of great knowledge. And let me just get my notes going here, and we, we continue with our teaching. I'm loving this, and I hope you're taking notes as we continue to build our case.
Now let's go over. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. This is verse 15. It says, an intelligent heart. This is talking about investing in you now. An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Wow. The intelligent heart acquires knowledge, the acquisition of knowledge. Just like there is the acquisition of money, the acquisition of resources, God is saying there must be an acquisition of knowledge, and not just any knowledge, the right knowledge, because many people are getting knowledge about this guy, this actor in Hollywood who and we had a relationship with this one, and that one then had a relationship with that one, and this one stole this. They are very knowledgeable about everything that's happening in Hollywood, but it's not changing their economic status. Now, that is useless knowledge. It's taking up space in your brain, but it's not changing the quality of life. You need to get the knowledge of God. Remember, we talked about the knowledge of the fear of God and the knowledge of who he is. That's where it ought to lead to. So he says there, that we ought, to, we ought to be able to get wisdom and seek knowledge. Proverbs 15, 14, we're on 18, 15, now we're on 15, 14. It says there, the heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on folly. Now, this is a very strong scripture, giving us a very interesting warning here. He says, the heart of him that is understanding seeks knowledge. So if you have understanding, guess what? We will see it by your pursuit of knowledge. But the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. So we know what you are by what you're feeding on. If you're filling your whole day and your whole week with just all kinds of social media stuff and content that is filled with all kinds of stuff and it's just all oh, brain. I, I, I fight with people and say, why are you watching all this brainless stuff? Stuff that doesn't ignite thought, ingenuity, and so on. Okay, yeah, you're, you're unwinding. But if you're unwinding for five hours watching that stuff, then there is a problem. Proverbs 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Do you love knowledge? Do you pursue knowledge? How much time have you invested today in acquiring wisdom, knowledge, insight, understanding, creativity, principles, foundations? How, how much time have you invested? You've had from eight, let's say from six, seven in the morning until now it's about eight o'clock. You've had about 10, 11 hours. How much of those 11 hours have you invested in acquiring knowledge? Of course, right now, that's exactly what you're doing. So you are wise. You are in the right place and congratulations for seeking wisdom and knowledge. But you know, it's easy to get into the cycle of life that keeps you so busy, going nowhere, but you are just on this busy treadmill. Let's read another passage. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 to verse 17. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than the gain from silver, and her profit is better than gold. That's beautiful. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand is our riches and honor. Now you hear God is really now helping us understand why we should pursue knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and all of this. So he's saying it is more precious than jewels, more precious than, uh, than, than silver and gold. And then he says, when you get this level of knowledge and understanding, it will come with, with riches and honor and long life. We all want to live long. We all want to live healthy. We all want to live a good life, drive a good car, do all of that great stuff. God is saying it comes from investing in you. So God's investment model or principle or policy begins by the investments you make into yourself. In my coaching sessions, I often say this and ask this question to people. 
What are you investing in yourself, in your life? Because many people expect me to passionately invest into them when they are not passionate about investing into themselves. I cannot place a greater value on your head than you place value on your own head. He continues to say, Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her, wisdom and understanding is better than the gain of silver and the profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing can compare with her. Oh, I double posted my scripture here. This is what I want to read. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness and her paths are peace so we find long life we find riches we find honor we find pleasantness and we find peace five amazing benefits from the acquisition of knowledge of understanding of the commandments of the principles of the word of god is the word of god priority in your life how much of the word are you re reading and investing into your life on a daily basis. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 to 19. I love those that love me, and those who seek diligently, seek me diligently, will find me. Are you diligently seeking the word of God? Verse 18 says, Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold and my yield than choice silver. So the key here, he, he is making it so, so clear that we ought to love wisdom, pursue wisdom diligently. And it says when you find wisdom, you will find riches and honor, enduring wealth and righteousness. That's brilliant. Proverbs chapter 8 and then verse 21. Chapter 2 verse 21. It says, I grant an inheritance to those that love me, filling their treasuries. Wow. I grant an inheritance to those that love me. You want an inheritance? You want to live long? You want a healthy life? Beautiful life? He's saying wisdom. When you get wisdom, I will give you an inheritance and I will fill your treasuries. Your investments will be filled. Your savings will be filled. Your, 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 your money will overflow. You will have resources to do that which you need to do. Now, as I close, I want to encourage you by giving you six key points of investing into yourself. How do you invest in yourself? What should I do? Here are six things that you can and should be doing, and this is daily. Number one. You must invest in yourself through sermons and teachings. Get good sermons like this teaching. Get it, get it, get it. I come on daily from 8 to 8.30 and we share wisdom. We share the word of God. We share the principles of the word of God. So I want to encourage you, stay connected. When you miss it and you, you're, you're busy doing something else, it will always be on my YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to Dr. Titch Tanyanyiwa, and you'll stay posted on all the great content that we have put out just for you. So sermons and teachings are important. When you're driving in your car, don't just listen to any other weird, I mean, there's so many weird radio stations that just talk. I mean, I remember one time, I don't know who had borrowed my car, and was using my car to do some errands. And when the car came back, it was on some, I don't know, talk show radio station. And I'm driving, and I'm, uh, in my mind, I never think of turning on the radio when I start my car. It automatically will go to an audio that I've been playing, whether it's worship or a teaching that we're listening to. And we have selected teachers that we listen to when I'm driving or in, in our car. So I, I drive, and I'm in my car, and... I'm driving, my mind is thinking I'm receiving what I normally receive, but something was really aggravating me, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And when my mind registered, I realized, oh, there's this radio station that's playing, and they're just ranting on, and, you know, these, these uh, radio presenters can just, I, I don't know where they get all those weird stories, but they can just go on and on talking about absolutely nothing, and it's just weird. 
And how can you expect to live a successful life listening to a whole lot of hot air and stuff that has no content, that is no wisdom, that is no principles? It's just silly talk. Silly talk leads to silly living. We've already read that, that the mouth of the fool pursues folly. He goes after foolishness. And there's a lot of people with a great appetite or propensity for foolishness. You have a great desire for foolish talk. It's amazing how believers can have such a great appetite. Number two, uh, get coaching and empowerment. Get coaching. You need to have a coach in your life. Get a coach in your life. will empower you, encourage you, help you build your plan, your strategy for life, help you clarify your dream, your vision, and begin to pursue it and help you to be accountable. Who's coaching you? Who's going on the journey with you? Get a coach. Be willing to invest some money in a good coach that will help you move forward. Number three, reading good books. And on that one, I want to just quickly say, here are three good books that you must read. If you haven't read any of these three beautiful books, I encourage you, get serious about your life. Get serious about your financial destiny. You need to get these books in your life. This is Masters of the Economy, How to Master Your Personal Economy, the Torah, the church, and the marketplace. That's what you're learning here. How to move into the marketplace and become a, a superpower economically. Birthing a mega economy is a build on from masters of the economy, the rise of the African continent, a prophetic call to the church in Africa to begin to arise and take and master the economies. And, oh, I've repeated this one. I should have had the Judeo-Abrahamic wealth factor. I think I was reading it earlier on, so it's in my bag. The Judeo-Abrahamic wealth factor, but you'll see it coming up, popping up on the screen on the lower thirds there. So you can go to my website, Birthing a mega economy dot Africa and be able to buy yourself a copy of that brilliant, brilliant trilogy. It will change your life. So invest in good books. Read good books. Leaders are readers. So read good books. Develop the habit of reading. Develop the habit of investing into you. Okay. I am about to stop just now. Got three more points to bring to you. Number four, keep good company. Bible tells us, again, in the book of Proverbs, if you keep company with an angry man, you'll become angry. If you keep company with fools, you'll become a fool. If you keep company with people that are quick to shed blood, you'll become a murderer and you'll end up in jail or you'll end up dead. If you keep company with people that do not understand principles of holiness and purity and sexual um, purity and holiness, you will end up messing up. You need to manage your inner circle. That's probably one of the most key fundamental principles I teach in the coaching sessions to help people understand your company determines who you become. Whoever is in your inner circle today will be your lifestyle in the next three, four, five years. So if you're hanging around people with loose morals, in the next three, four, five years, you'll be cheating on your wife. You'll be cheating on your husband. And, and I've proved this. I've been a pastor now for 20, 21 or whatever number of years. But I can tell you clearly, Every single person, I used to preach this when I was a youth pastor many years ago. I, can t I used to tell them, I can tell where you will be in 10 years' time. And guess what? Every single one of those people that were in my youth group are exactly where I saw them. Ten well, now it's 20-something years later. The ones that had a passion for the Lord and a certain proclivity for the things of God are in ministry, have good marriages, are solid, are founded in the word of God. And the ones that had their wayward ways and wayward behaviors, you know, when we'd have youth camps, when we'd have youth camps, there were certain young people in the youth group that we always had to sp pay special attention to. We had to appoint one of the youth leaders to say, watch over so-and-so, 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 because we know at night they're going to want to come out of the dorms and go to the girls' dormitories. There is always those weird guys that have issues with their morality and their purity. And guess what? 20 years later, they either have bad marriages, they've had five, six, seven children with different women, and their lives are a mess. You can trace it back to behaviors that we saw when we went out to youth camps, uh, that's 20-something years ago. 
and, and those that were focused, very principled, and so on, are in business, are in the marketplace, are financially free. So your life right now is being influenced by the inner circle and by the information you are assimilating. What investments are you making into yourself? Then number five, time with God. Time with God, that's in prayer, praying in the Holy Spirit, spending time with the Holy Spirit, worshiping the Lord, singing to the Lord. That is a great investment that you make into your spiritual atmosphere that will make you super, super productive. And by the way, each one of these is actually a whole lecture, a whole coaching program. But I'm just giving you the points, bang, 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 so we can close. Then the last one is attending a good church what church do you go to what kind of church do you go to is it a church that empowers you for financial success relational success success in your personal life and success in your career and in your finances or are they just preaching a message about escaping earth and going to heaven or just sermons that really don't address the real issues that you are facing in life i want to encourage you get yourself planted in a good church churches are open People can go back to worship and to fellowship, and I want to encourage you, go back to your church. If you'd love to come and visit us at Prevailing Word Ministries International, hey, you're always welcome. But if you have a great church that you're planted at, stay planted, stay connected, serve well, learn, absorb wisdom, learn, accumulate knowledge, and assimilate it. And your life will never be the same. Well, I trust you have been helped and encouraged today talking about wisdom and how to make investments into your life. When you learn to make investments into you, you are going to learn to make investments in the area of finance and business and marketplace and key relationships, and that is what translates to wealth. Thank you so much, Dr. Titch here on Couch Time with Dr. Titch. Have a great evening, and we'll see you again same time tomorrow evening. God bless you.